Hey, I'm Hannah. I'm a writer. I write contemporary and fantasy, and you can get my two short story collections in paperback, audiobook, and ebook, all linked in the description. If you saw my recent video about drafting a novel in January, you may remember that I mentioned a new software I was trying out. It's called Novelpad, and today I'm gonna to be telling you all about it. Even if Novelpad wasn't sponsoring this video, thank you, Novelpad, I would still be telling you about this software because I don't think I would have finished my book in a month if I did not have it, and I'm gonna tell you why later. But first, I'm gonna go over all of the softwares that I've used before Novelpad so that you have an idea of my criteria as I talk about it. So I've used a few different ones. Google Docs, Microsoft Word, and Scrivener were the ones that I used for the longest amount of time. Let's start with Google Docs because it's a good one. I love Google Docs because it's browser-based. That means that you can access it anywhere on any device. That's really helpful for me. And I really like that it's easily shareable and their suggestions function is really helpful for getting critique from your writing partners and stuff like that. Google Docs falls flat for me for longer projects in a couple of ways. Number one, there's kind of a lack of organization, which isn't necessarily Google Docs fault because it's not built to draft novels. You can use their folders and different documents and stuff to organize things, but as far as organizing one solid manuscript, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And my second problem with it is also due to it just not being built to write novels in that you can't break up a longer piece into smaller sections without having actual separate documents. And that means that it starts lagging as the story gets longer. Overall, I think Google Docs is the best free option for drafting novels, but obviously once you're ready to invest money, your options are gonna get a little bit better. Microsoft. Word. I use Microsoft Word every single day, whether it's for drafting shorter pieces or if I'm doing critiques for someone. Hi, why are you driving so slow? That's so weird. But I don't love Microsoft Word for drafting novels for a few reasons. Just like Google Docs, it does tend to lag when you hit those bigger word counts. Also like Google Docs, it's not built for drafting novels. Since it isn't optimized for novels, there isn't really a good way to organize your world building and your character sheets and all that kind of stuff into one project. Again, you can use folders and separate documents, but why do you like to suffer? Microsoft Word was kind of just a pain for me to draft a fantasy novel in particular because there are so many different elements to keep track of and I prefer having everything in as streamlined a space as possible. So nothing wrong with Microsoft Word, it's just not optimized for writing novels. Scrivener. Now Scrivener. If you've been around my channel for a while, you might remember that I used to make videos about Scrivener because I did really like it. If you're not familiar with Scrivener, it's just a novel drafting software that lets you really customize your writing space and organize different world building aspects like I'd mentioned a minute ago. So I had a few issues with Scrivener. The first big problem is that you can only access it from two devices or at the time that I bought it, which was not that long ago, maybe a year and a half. It's the last time I used it. So you can have two copies of the program, but they don't sync with each other. So you could have like one on your computer. And then if you have a family member that also writes, they could have a version. So it's more like Microsoft Word than Google Docs because you can't access it anywhere else. And there is kind of a weird convoluted process you can take where you basically re-download your backup files onto different devices. It's just not easy and it's not reliable. So that's really, really annoying if you work from different devices like I do. The second problem was in my experience, the backup system was unreliable. I haven't really looked into this to see if many people had this problem, but for me, I had my backup files on my hard drive and then on two different clouds and I backed it up all the time and none of them backed up properly. So during the time I was using Scrivener every single day, super happy with it, there was a software update. And so I installed the update and all of my files were wiped. The only thing that was left on the program were my headers. And then whenever I went to retrieve my backup files, that's all that was backed up as well and I couldn't figure out why. So I contacted Scrivener support and I was like, hey, my novels are gone. And they said, check your backups. And I said, I did. They're just headings. And they said, aw, sucks. So the Scrivener I had on my laptop, I hadn't updated yet. So I rejected that update and copied all of my stuff over. And it was like a fairly recent version because I had just downloaded all of it to go on a trip. So I'm glad I did that or I would have been out months of work and customer support said, Good luck. And I haven't used Scrivener again. So now that you have an idea of my personal preferences for drafting softwares, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my new favorite, which is Novelpad. Let's take a little tour. If you see spoilers for my novel while we're looking at this, no, you didn't. <laughs> Close your eyes. So when you open Novelpad, you can see all of your active novels here. Let's just click on one. This is your drafting page. So you can see your entire novel from beginning to end. So this is all just one big document. And I haven't had trouble with lagging like I have uh, mentioned with Google Docs and Microsoft Word, so that's cool. But you also don't have to draft from this. I think you're meant to, but I do something else, which I'll show you in a second. So this is your chapters page where you can get an overview of your entire project. And I really, really like it. And this is actually where I draft from because you can click this and it pulls up in this little half screen and you can just focus on this one scene. And that works best for me because I like being able to 
see all of it at once, but then also zoom into one particular part to work on at a time, if that makes sense. So I draft from the chapters page. I also really like it because you can swap chapters around so easily. You just click and drag them and then you can move the scenes around, which is my favorite. I wanna say Scrivener let you arrange chapters but not scenes within it. Don't quote me on that, but that's one of my favorites. So I really, really love that feature because I just write really short summaries of each scene so I can get the overview and know what's happening because otherwise I get so lost in those really long documents. So this is the best way for me to work. And then you've got your plots page. I already had this book plotted when I started, so I didn't utilize this feature too much, but I'm really excited to be able to. You can organize it however you want, but you can see all of the scenes that correlate with that plot line, which is very neat. Um, and this is your character page. I do kind of wish that you could do more with the characters. Let's edit one. You can put their name and then you can put their nicknames and the nickname is there so that every scene that has that character mentioned in it will be under that heading. So that's a really cool feature. But then there's just like a blank page for you to put there biography. I was thinking I wanted like a full character sheet, but I think I would just be happy if I could upload a picture. I like having pictures of my characters while I draft. But I really like this because then you just see every single scene that that character shows up in. And it's awesome. I really hope there aren't spoilers in my scene titles. Okay, anyway, and then we have the locations page. So the locations is kind of like the character page as well. So you can have the name of your location and then whatever notes you have on it. And then you can tag your different scenes with where they take place. And then you can see Neve's a horse girl kills two men in cold blood. Okay. That's not actually a spoiler. That doesn't really happen. So see, the this is everything that happens in the Citadel and this is everything that happens in the city. And I haven't tagged all of my scenes with this yet, which is why they're kind of a random amount of them, but that's really cool. The insights page is my favorite. So you can choose two elements and then basically cross-reference them. So this is locations and characters. You can see every scene that that character is in that location. And you can do it with chapters, plots, and like the colors that you uh, flag the scenes with or whatever. This is another feature that I'm like really excited about, but didn't get to utilize that much in this particular book. But when I'm planning other books in this software, I'm gonna use the heck out of this. This is the goals page. You can see notes that you left on certain scenes. I like the notes feature, this is two days over. So you can, oh look, I'll add some days to it. And that's when it's due or whatever. So this is just a note on how to revise this scene. This is another feature I didn't use too much, but I will. You can just see your goal progress. So your words per day, ideal words per day, and estimated completion date. These numbers are a little bit weird. I'm not gonna be writing 20,000 words a day. This is just because I had set a goal and I think it ended in February, but um, I haven't been working on this project. This is a really good feature for my number oriented pals or the ones who need to be actually kept on track with specific goals. And then you just have your save button. You can download it as a docx, a markdown or an EPUB. So the EPUB is good for my indie authors if you just wanna download your ebook and then upload it to whatever your distributor is, it's really easy. Um, this is where you set your writing goals. So you put what you wanna write and by when, oh, it was in January. And then your formatting, you can just change the way that your text shows up to be whatever you want. Um, you can change from light to dark theme. Ugh. <laughs> if something doesn't have a dark theme, I will not be using it. Thank you so much. And then here's where you can um, label those scenes. So you can make your own labels, which is cool. So this could be like whatever your system is. If you want to label like a to edit or a revised, and that would give you like the current state of writing on the scene, or you could do like this is uh, violence. <laughs> this is uh, friendship building. Like whatever way you want to label your own scenes, you can customize that, which is really cool. I might do like this is an uplifting scene. This is a tense scene or whatever, so that you can plan out that like roller coaster of emotion that you want to be happening through your book. I've used this feature in other softwares to track which characters are in which scene, but Novelpad does that for you. So you have even more freedom with what you do with these because they give you a lot of the data that you would be tracking manually. So those are your basic features. Now let's talk about what slaps and what flops. So my favorite Novelpad features. Like I already said, I love that it's browser-based. I want to be able to get it from anywhere that I am on any device and that's super sick. The fact that it's online makes the backups much more reliable. It has autosave. The one downside is that they don't have offline mode yet, but I was told that it's coming in the next couple of weeks, so that's pretty much a non-issue. I really like how this chapters page is laid out. I like that you can start a new scene in your text just by, I think it's control enter. Yeah, so there's a new scene and that scene break is gonna be shown here. So that's that new scene that I just made. I just love how quick and easy it is to just 
flip shit around. And from here, you can assign your color labels or indicate where it happens. I like that it can all be done from right here. I like, see, like I said, I like seeing that big picture, but then I like being able to really easy and conveniently zoom into something. The hourly backup and autosave. I've had a few times where I was using Novelpad and then my Wi-Fi died and the page would auto refresh and I lost like maybe a couple of sentences because that autosave was on. So that's a really good feature for me. And like I said, offline mode is coming soon. This is a fairly vague bit of praise, but I really like the simplicity of the organization that makes it work really well for me. Scrivener, like there's a learning curve with every software, but Scrivener I felt like was a little bogged down with features and they may have had an update since then. Scrivener is like the closest thing I can compare to, but they had like separate items for every bit of organization. Novelpad kind of collaborates features in a way that's streamlined and just makes sense. I just really like that chapters page where I can see everything and then zoom into a specific thousand words and work on that. So for the way I write and work, this is a game changer. I wrote a book in a month. I think that's pretty good. Okay, now it's time for the things I didn't like very much. There's a bug where like sometimes if you paste something or you like highlight text and drag it, you get an error screen. And I found a workaround for this where you just like, you have to make a new line and then paste as plain text and then it works. So that was a little annoying. As of when I'm filming this video, the goal tracker doesn't let you insert a start date. So the start date for your goals is whenever you began the project, like whenever you open that project. So it calculates the numbers based on however long it's been opened, even if you just now started working on that goal, if that makes sense. That feels like a really weird system, so they're probably gonna update that soon. Overall, I give Novelpad an 8.5 out of 10. I really love it. I don't think I would have written my last draft as quickly as I did without it. I also think that rating is gonna get a lot higher as they implement changes and fixes. I'm really excited to see what they do with it in the future, and I'm not kidding when I'm telling you that Novelpad changed the way that I write. I've got some big writing goals this year and they kind of seem too achievable. I might have to add some more. You can check the description for more information. Also follow me on socials and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more writing content. See you next week, bye.